Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Last Money Plan. I'm Kirby. That's Alex. I know we all, every video y'all look at, we always laugh at it, smoking and joking and things. But um, today we're going to talk about Alex. Alex has completely successfully just closed on another rental property. So he's moving at a faster clip than I was. But, but, um, but yeah, Alex just closed on a rental property. Today we're going to talk and discuss, you know, what, what that process was like. Um, I ain't gonna spoil your thunder. I ain't gonna talk about how you closed already. So, with all that being said, Alex, let's get into it. Uh, first off, right now, where are you at doing this I'm, video? I'm in Tifton, Georgia. Okay, in Tifton, Georgia. So, so give us a little rundown. What's your purpose of being in? So, uh, where I bought the rental property, such a small town, they didn't have any hotels. So. <laughs> So Tifton was the closest town. <laughs> Tifton was the closest town uh with hotels. So um that's where we're at right now, about 30 minutes away. Okay, so what you doing there? What you doing there? Give us yeah, people want to so, know. Yeah, want to right. know. So yeah, so uh just closed yesterday. Um just closed on the property. It was a cash purchase, went very quick. Um probably on honestly took about 10 minutes and really it probably only took that long because it was a matter of the realtor coming into the office because we were waiting on her and then chit chatting and stuff so honestly it would have probably taken about five minutes to do everything but it was about three four pages is that correct three four right, pages right, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um and georgia or at least where we're at is such a small area like the realtor was like, yeah, uh, Mr. Wincock, the seller, she was like, he was my history teacher. I was like, wow. <laughs> like, <"Damn." laughs> so, so it's kind of different coming. It's kind of different coming from a small town. I mean, coming from a big place like where you're from and then go to a small town and everybody know each other. Yeah. Yeah. It was weird. I mean, even like getting the inspector when I called him, which was, you know, the specter you referred me to, um, he was like, what's the address? And I and I told him, he's like, yeah, yeah, I know that road. Like, I don't know anyone that's just like, yeah, yeah, that street. Like, I'm familiar with it. Like, because this is a road in a neighborhood. It's not like a main road. Like, so he knew it. And then he asked, like, the realtor's name. And I told him he knew her. I was like, wow, everybody knows everything here. So, um, but we closed yesterday. Um, today, I got guys working on the house. Um fixing the flooring and all that um and then putting in a new toilet so all in all came out about 36 five 36 thousand five hundred everything included and then rents will be raised to 500 or they're already raised because we signed a lease yesterday um and I signed it before closing so I was like you know what let me just get this done with so I went ahead and signed yeah. it before closing um I needed a support beam, had a call, just giving details, like had a call to get that delivered. Um, it was delivered by a small lumber company here. So, which was funny because even the realtor, knew, like the, the lumber company knew the realtors. I was like, what the heck? Like everyone, it's everyone's so familiar with everything. Um, but it, it'll cash flow good. Um, and then plan on raising the rents by 100 uh per year up until it gets to 800 um which will be at today's market rents by then it'll probably be you know the market rents will probably be higher. higher yeah it'll be higher but i mean it'll be higher but your tenants still paying below market rents but so i got a couple questions to unpack with this um first you bought a rental car uh, you bought a rental property <clears throat> oh <laughs> all right you bought a rental property uh <laughs> Two different ways now. You bought one cash and you bought one financing. So what do you see as the difference between two? Well, I mean, what parts do you like about, you know? Yeah, so it's funny because I was thinking about this in the car and I was thinking about the last video we made and on uh, on that one. And I, my response would still be the same. I do not like the process of buying it. Like, I just want to get it over with. Like, I think, like, obviously, like, I love adding to the portfolio that's what drives me to buy more real estate but like once you're in the deal and you're under contract it's just like uh like i hate this crap like 
because like it like especially with this one even though it was a cash deal it was a matter of finding a lumber company to deliver a beam making sure they're going to deliver it because my experience with delivery companies working for one anything can go wrong and they don't deliver it and then this company was closed on weekends so it was like if they don't deliver it and then i have the guys coming up so it was like that whole making sure everything's intact um and then you know putting in the offer and stuff that's not a big deal and then this was my first time working with the tenant that i'm that i don't personally know so that was a new yeah. experience for me as well um luckily though i think having experience managing uh i guess you could say like men like 50 more than 50 drivers at work um actually managing them i guess that gives me I have that experience with communicating. So it wasn't like difficult speaking to him and telling him, you know, about the lease and everything, but it was just like, I didn't know the guy or anything. So I was just trying to like word it the best I could. Right. Um, right. Right. So then, with, no, no, did you have something? Oh yeah. All right. So um, with that, with that, so what is your ROI looking? So when you bought, so let's start, let's start like this. When you, when you did the deal, what was your ROI looking like before you raise the rents the day you close? And then what is your ROI looking like two years out when you plan on having the tenant at current day's market rent or the property paying current day's market rent? So would it look like before I raised his rent? Was that your so what did it, what, what, what's your ROI look like? So when you saw the deal and you was doing a deal, you was like, just based on the numbers that they had right here, what the what would the ROI have been? Would have been. Yeah. So their initial list price, 45 grand, and the rents 250. It wouldn't have worked. Um, I mean, it would have been like I would have been surprised if it was break even, like cash flow neutral. Um right. but based off the rents is when I low when I offered a lower price to make it closer to the rent. Cause I didn't want so to so so the then the tenant paying lower rent actually benefited you instead of hurted you in this deal. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't a matter of offering them their asking and then talking to the tenant, seeing if I could bring it up and then making a lower offer. It was making them a lower offer, getting them closer to that rent amount. So he was paying 250. I was trying to get it close to the one percent. I could have offered 25, but I didn't want to push my luck and be over greedy. So I offered 30. Right. I offered 30. He countered with 32.5. And I figured, okay, let me just take it so I can work with it here. And so 32.5 was, you know, still 12,500 below asking. Um, and then spoke with the tenant beforehand, uh, informed him that I was going to raise the rent to 500. By then, I already knew with the guys I have that do work on the properties, I knew I could remodel the whole place for like at least 10 grand. So I knew I could right, be right. 42, five in that worst case if the tenant moved out, I could bring it up to market rents. So right. I gave the guy the option of remaining in his house, but for, you know, I doubled his rent to 500. He accepted. So now we're now at 500 a month. And me being in at 32.5, it's way above the 1% rule. And then even after closing costs, um, materials and labor and hotel included, um, it comes out to about 36.5. So about 4,000 more, um, which is still, you know, 500 still above the 1%. So. Yeah. So have you did the numbers yet to see what your ROI is? So it should be around. I did it with it being at 40,000. I haven't checked with 36.5, but at 40, like if I was all in at 40,000, my ROI would have been 11 and a half percent. So I haven't right. checked. I haven't checked with it being at 36.5 yet. So, oh, so 11, so 11 percent. The hurdle rate right now is about four, maybe 5 percent. So you double in the hurdle rate. So you're doing about, you know, 100 percent higher than the hurdle rate. So what is your what is your what's your bottom line ROI? I mean, I know what the, you know, risk-free rate is, you know, whatever the treasury is at. But what is your bottom line ROI that you would you would go for? For real estate, my my bottom line, me personally, is 
just because I know the SPY in the SPY or the SPY I can get uh, 8% minimum year over year in the long term. So I just figured, you know, 10%, which should be a flat number. Yeah, no, 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 no. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. So now you have rental property number two when you go going for the next one. What's your plans with that? My goal is before the year ends, if I can do it. So we'll see. Will you, well, which area? I'm all tongue twisted today. Sorry, people. All right. So, what, uh, are, so you go, are you, do you believe that your next deal will be up there in Georgia or do you think it'll be back home in Florida? Just, just, yeah. Of course. You, you're not, you're not held to this, whatever you say. So, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Of course. It. The thing with Florida for me is, just the amount of, I guess, contacts I have through work and stuff, I know I can get an automatic tenant and I can coordinate that and I can make it work on that behalf. I can make sure the tenant, yeah. like I'll know what the tenant is going to pay before I even make the offer. So it could be in Florida for that reason. Um, as If I were to just purchase on my own, like, hey, let me just find a rental property in Florida. No, no tenant about it. Like, no designated tenant. No, I wouldn't do it. Um, so if if I were to go that route, then it would be back up here in Georgia. So, right, right, cool. All right, everybody. There, there. Alex is. Uh, FYI, I got a couple. Well, I don't have many properties where Alex is at, but I'm not that far away. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but no, that's good. You got got through the process. You uh, two down. Only nine hundred more to go. <laughs> yeah. 998. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so with all that being said, y'all have a good one. Please like, comment. Uh make sure you congratulate Alex in the comment section below. And we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.